Today, shares of Trump Media and backed Whipsaw after reports the president-elect's company could buy the crypto firm. Coinbase CEO Brian Armstrong meets with the president-elect. And Better Market CEO Dennis Kelleher gives a critical take on the crypto industry's election contributions. Welcome to CNBC's Crypto World, I'm Tanea McKeel. Crypto markets mixed this morning. As of noon Eastern, Bitcoin climbed more than a percent to $92,646. Ether fell one and three quarters of a percent and Solana gained a little less than 1%. At the same time, shares of Mara Holdings are surging this morning after the company upped its sale of convertible notes, which we first told you about yesterday. The company is raising its offering from $700 million to $850 million due to demand and plans to use the funds in part to buy more Bitcoin. Shares of the company rose more than 11% by midday. Okay, let's talk about the top stories. The rapper and wife of the hacker who stole thousands of Bitcoin from Bitfinex has been sentenced to prison. On Wednesday, a federal judge sentenced Heather Morgan, who also goes by Razzlecon, to 18 months for her role in the theft. Just last week, Morgan's husband, Ilya Lichtenstein, was sentenced to five years in prison for the heist. Now, after her sentencing, Morgan posted a video statement on X where she said she'd been keeping quiet because she, quote, likes to listen to her lawyers, but said she would soon be telling her story and revealing other creative projects. Next, Trump Media is reportedly in talks to buy crypto trading firm Bact. Shares of both companies soared shortly after the Financial Times reported the news. Trump Media closed more than 16% higher and Bact spiked more than 162%. Trading of that stock halted repeatedly due to volatility. As of noon Eastern today, the companies traded down more than 8% and up 11% respectively. Former backed CEO Kelly Leffler is co-chair of Trump's inauguration committee. CNBC reached out to Trump Media for comment but didn't hear back immediately. Finally, Coinbase CEO Brian Armstrong met with Donald Trump. A source close to the company told us yesterday that Armstrong attended a private meeting with the president-elect, and the Wall Street Journal reported the conversation centered around personnel appointments by the incoming president. Armstrong donated more than $1.3 million to candidates up and down the ballot, including Trump, while Coinbase also gave more than $75 million to crypto super PAC Fairshake and its affiliate PACs. It also pledged to contribute $25 million for the 2026 midterms. All right, let's stick with crypto's role in politics for our main story. The industry has largely celebrated victories of pro-crypto candidates nationwide, but others have questioned whether the millions that crypto poured into the 2024 election did more harm than good. Dennis Kelleher, a CEO of Better Markets, wrote an op-ed after the election where he criticized what he called a bait and switch by the industry, flooding markets with ads that don't mention crypto to support candidates that will be friendly on policy. And this comes as recent polling shows most Americans have a negative view of the technology. Crypto World's Brandon Gomez spoke to Kelleher about his post-election views and the industry's growing influence in politics. Dennis, I, I know you had this op-ed in the San Francisco Chronicle. Uh, you know, we had spoken previously to an op-ed you had written to the Kamala uh, Harris administration advising her not to cater to the crypto trade. But in this one, you say what the crypto industry didn't say in its deceptive and effective campaign ads. I would pull out a couple points. You know, most Americans, you say, don't actually like or use crypto. Crypto knew this and funneled money into ads that didn't even mention the crypto industry. And to that point, you say crypto shouldn't even be a priority when it comes to what Washington does under this new administration. I mean, can you lay out a few of your thesis points beyond that? And if you really do feel that D.C. is going to prioritize crypto in its next administration? Uh, well, sure. Uh Look, I think one of the most important things to understand is that the crypto industry's entire 2024 campaign strategy was fundamentally deceptive. Uh, it really was a classic bait and switch and a fraud on the public. Uh, depending upon which report is right, the crypto industry spent somewhere between 100 and $200 million on campaign ads uh, in an effort to elect candidates who support their special interest agenda or defeat those who didn't. And it's telling because they spent that money on Democrats and Republicans. And now uh, you've got a lot of elected officials uh, who are in office that crypto spent a lot of money on. Um, and they're running around saying that they've got a mandate for their special interest agenda. But there's, there's one problem, and that's there's no mandate because the American people don't like or use 
crypto. And nothing about this election changes that. And let me just run through a few quick facts. When you say, I don't like crypto or I didn't like things going on, it's not liking or disliking, it's facts. Uh, there's a CNBC poll from late 2022 that found that just 8% of Americans had a positive view of crypto. In 2024, there was a Harris poll that found that 69% of likely voters in swing states, this is a 2024 poll, 69% of likely voters in swing states held a negative view of crypto. Now, the industry claims uh, that 52 Americans own crypto, but that's only based on a deceptive poll that the industry paid for. The actual figure, according to the Federal Reserve data, uh, survey data, is closer to 8 million Americans out of more than 300 million, and that number is declining. Moreover, of those um, who own crypto, uh, just 1% used it in 2023 to buy something, which actually is down from 2% from the prior year. And of course, that's not a surprise because you can't really buy anything with crypto. Um, now, interestingly, just last week, right, we're talking about current information here and data. Just last week, the FDIC issued a report of a survey of American households, which for the first time asked about digital assets. And it found that just 4.8% of U.S. households used or owned crypto. So by any measure, crypto is a very niche product. It's almost used by no one. And it's disliked, disfavored, and has a negative view of a supermajority of the American people. Now, the election results don't change those facts. And the crypto industry's actions actually prove how disliked the America, how disliked crypto is by the American people. Because instead of focusing their political ads on crypto, the industry funneled all their money through campaign, um, into the campaigns through so-called super PACs, which had these generic names like Fair Shake, Defend American Jobs, and Protect Progress. And what did they do? They produced equally generic political ads that literally never mentioned crypto. Well, and I, and I wanted and I want to dig into that further too, because right, the industry presumably right this influence this this massive amount of of money that was poured into this election cycle. I mean, it seems like the industry is going to continue to invest in these types of campaigns. You know, regardless of whether they mention the crypto industry or they sort of again, hide behind this sort of crypto label, but they're in fact pushing other agenda issues. Uh, where do you sort of see that momentum building in terms of regulation, right? Regulation of the industry. They, they, there, there's an appetite for regulation of crypto. Do you see that changing going forward? Well, no, I don't. But the important thing is that you've got the crypto industry um, lording around Washington, D.C., saying to politicians, you should enact our special agenda. You got elected because we spent money on you. And it's true, they spent money on them, but there is no mandate from the American people uh, for anybody in Washington to do anything regarding crypto because crypto was not on the ballot. Think about this. They spent between 100 and $200 million on campaign ads that said things like defend American jobs, don't send jobs overseas, America should be competitive. And now they're turning around and telling politicians that they, should, they have a mandate and they should enact crypto special interest legislation, when if anything, the, those politicians have a mandate to enact very generic non-crypto uh, topics that all Americans appreciate. So the question is whether or not uh, politicians in Washington are going to fall in line with the fake crypto agenda or whether or not they're going to put the American public's issues at the top of the agenda. And if you look at every single poll of the American people, you look at the top 10, the top 20, the top 50 concerns of the American people, crypto is nowhere to be found. Digital assets, well, nowhere to be found. So they're going to try and use their money and they're going to try and use this election in a bait and switch tactic to try and get people to do things that the American people don't want them to do. 
And I want to ask you about a couple of those campaigns because crypto, you know, played a significant role outside of the presidential campaign too, right? We've been talking about VP Harris, we've been talking about um, President-elect Donald Trump's platforms in the crypto space, but also you have to talk about uh, Bernie Moreno's Senate race in Ohio, taking that seat from Sherrod Brown, uh, uh, a long Democratic holdout, uh, turning Republican this cycle in crypto really played a large part there. So the question is, I mean, how critical was that race in your view? And were there other election races similar to that where pro-crypto backed candidates or seemingly pro-crypto backed candidates overturned seats? Well, I think it's, we think we need to be precise here. Um, crypto did not pay, play a big role in the Ohio election. Crypto money did. And I'll give you an example. One of the big uh, uh, super PAC, crypto super PACs, called the Cedar Innovation Fund, spent a ton of money in Ohio to defeat Sherrod Brown. And the ads it ran implored him, are you ready for this, to uh, not let the chair of the SEC send jobs overseas. And all these other generic, you know, kind of homespun things that 99% of the American people agree on, but not one of the ads mentioned crypto. So yes, crypto money was important in helping certain candidates and defeating other candidates. But the issue of crypto was never on the ballot anywhere. Think about this. It would be as if the Ford Motor Company spent $200 million on ads and never mentioned cars. Okay, it's astonishing. It's so brazen what they're doing here. And so the issue is whether or not, you know, the crypto money the crypto billionaire's money is going to buy special interest legislation or whether or not the people who are in Congress are going to say there's no crypto mandate. All the facts, data and polls show that. And the crypto industry's own advertising campaign is a de facto admission that the American people don't support crypto. So I'll I'll, I'll leave us on this question, which for you, what is your best case? in your worst case scenario when it comes to crypto in the next administration, the next four years? The best case uh, that's foreseeable under the current circumstances is that crypto does in fact get some modest amount of regulation that includes transparency, that includes oversight and accountability, and it has substantial investor customer and financial stability protections. That's the best case. It's not likely. What's likely is the worst case, which is that a bunch of, you know, crypto political allies are going to enact the appearance of regulation without the reality of regulation that's going to cause many, many more investor and customer victims and unfortunately is going to undermine financial stability that will ultimately contribute to the next financial crash in a way that's avoidable and unnecessary. But given the current climate and the current crypto cash, probably the most likely outcome. All right, before we go, one last point on crypto's potential influence on politics in 2025 and beyond. Sources have told NBC News that Howard Lutnick, the CEO of Cantor Fitzgerald, and a backer of both Bitcoin and the stablecoin Tether, has been tapped by President-elect Trump as Commerce Secretary. An official for Trump's transition did not immediately respond to a request for comment, but check back at CNBC.com for more. That's all for Crypto World today. We'll be back again tomorrow, and we'll see you then.